Hello, I thought I'd record a quick video for you uh, to show you how to get going with this Masaro Limited question. So the income statement has already been prepared for the year ended 30th of April 2018 and we're left with these balances in the ledger accounts. Okay, so all of these are going to appear on the statement of financial position and that's what we're going to be asked to prepare. So this is going to be our starting point, um, but we've got a whole load of additional information here. I think it goes to about six points on the next page. Yeah, we've got six points of additional information. So I'm just going to take these one by one and show you what you need to do um, to the figures. So the first thing we've got to deal with is that the land and buildings were revalued at a million pounds. Now, if we look up here, you can see the original figures for the land and buildings. The cost was £600,000 and the provision for depreciation was £216,000. If we take one away from the other, we are left with, I think, mm, £384,000. So that's the current net book value. Okay. Now, if we want to then increase that to a million pounds, we've got a sizable increase in value, haven't we? So if we increase the value to a million pounds, the net book value currently is only 384,000. By my reckoning, we've got an increase of 616,000 pounds. So what we're going to need is a revaluation reserve. Remember, that's a type of capital reserve, which goes on the statement of financial position in the equity section. So we're going to need 616,000 pounds in there. We're then going to need to use our new cost the million pounds um, instead of the original cost of 600,000. Um, and it tells us here that the company's policy is to depreciate land and buildings at the rate of 2%. So what effectively happens here is that we bump up the value to a million, I've lost a zero off of there, um, and then we start the depreciation again. So that's effectively written off into this revaluation reserve. So our depreciation is just gonna be 2% of the million pounds. So I reckon that's going to be £20,000. So when we do our statement of financial position for 2018, we'll have a million pounds showing in the cost and 20000 in the depreciation column, which will give us 980000 in the right-hand column, which we then add on to the uh, net current assets. Okay, so that's point one dealt with. Point two, we've got goods that cost £10,000 and that had a sale value of 17500 was sent on a sale or return basis to a customer on the 27th of April 2018. The sale of these goods was recorded in the ledger accounts at the 27th of April, so that means that by the end of the year, that sale um, at the sale price of 17500 had been included in the income statement, um, but the goods hadn't been recorded in the closing inventory. Okay. Now, on the 5th of May, so it's only five days after the year end, those goods have been sent back to the customer as they had not been sold. So what we've got to do is unravel all of this. We've got to take the sale, the 17,500 out of sales, therefore that's going to reduce the retained earnings up here. And we're going to have to include the inventory, the £10,000 inventory at cost, um, because it still belongs to Masaro Limited. It hasn't actually been sold. So we think about what's going to happen to the income statement. So remember that the retained earnings is what's left of the profits on the income statement. So if we're only dealing with the statement of financial position, we don't have to redo the whole income statement. We just have to adjust these figures. So we're going to add, or sorry, we're going to take off the um, 17,500 sale or return of goods. Um, we're going to take that out of the um, retained earnings for the year. And we're also going to take that out of trade receivables because it will assume that it was a credit sale. I think it probably tells us that we didn't need to assume. Um, and then we're going to have to add them back to closing inventory. So inventory at the moment is 82,500, but we're going to need to add the 10,000 pounds of inventory back at cost. Now, obviously, if we increase closing inventory on the statement of financial position, we also need to increase it in the income statement. So that will make our profit go up by £10,000. Remember, an increase in closing inventory reduces cost of sales. So that sees our profits go up. OK, so that's that dealt with. The double entry then was to debit the income statement with the 17500 sale, credit 
the trade receivables, the 17,500 sale that wasn't really a sale, and then to debit the um, inventory, closing inventory on the statement of financial position and credit closing inventory on the income statement, which has a knock-on effect of increasing our profits for the year, which then boosts up retained earnings. Okay, so that's that one dealt with. Point three, we received a check on 30th of April 2018 for £5,400. And this was for rent received. So this is rent that's due to the business covering the period 1st of April to the 30th of June. Okay, now remember our year end is the 30th of April. So we've got one month in the year and two months is actually income received in advance. So it's a um, prepaid income. So no entries have been made to record the receipt of the check. So the first thing we're going to need to do is bank it. So we've got a bank overdraft at the moment of £15,000. If we pay that check in, 5400 that will reduce the bank overdraft. But then what we've got to decide is where to credit. Okay, It says that um, the amount of rent owing for the year had been entered in the ledger account. So they'd already accrued for that rent at the 30th of April 2018. So that means we don't need to include it in income, but it would have been included in other receivables. So that 3,100 needs to be reduced by the 1,800 rent that's now been received. Okay, so we just take the 1,800 straight out of there. We've got another issue though with the um, rent that we've received for May and June. So we've received in advance May and June's rent. So that's £1,800 times two. So if we divide this by three, it's £1,800 per month. That's where I'm getting the £1,800 from, in case you were wondering. Step ahead of myself there. So that means that 3600 has been received in advance. Now remember that income received in advance is added to other payables. So um, there's my other payables. We need to add 3600 rent received in advance to other payables because it's not really this the business's money as at the 30th of April. It's not been earned until May and June. So we need to make sure that we treat that as a liability. Okay, so that's number three dealt with. Um, number four, on the 30th of April, a cheque for £860 was received from a former customer. The customer had been put into liquidation in January 2017 with an outstanding debt of 2580 and that had already been written off. So that 2580 has already been deducted when they've arrived at the retained earnings for the year. It's already been taken off of profit. Um, but no entries have been made in the books of account to record the receipt of the cheque. So this is that snappy thing, the irrecoverable debt recovered. So the red herring there is that 2580. We don't need to do anything with that. But the 860 is the irrecoverable debt recovered. So again, we're going to have to pay that into the bank. £860 and we're also going to um, add it to retained earnings because that's going to increase our profit by £860. So you see that I've paid it into the bank, £860 there and I've also added it to retained earnings. So again that's going to reduce the overdraft. Okay, no entries have been made to amend the provision for doubtful debts account. So remember with doubtful debts we have to look and see what's brought forward. So we've got £900 brought forward. Um, it's the company's policy to maintain the provision at 2% of trade receivables. Okay, So our trade receivables are actually 38000 minus 17500 Let's do that on my calculator just to make sure I get this right. Minus 17500 is 20500 If we times that by 2%, It means that the provision we need is only 410. Now we've got brought forward 900, so therefore we need to reduce it by the difference, 490 pounds. Okay, so we're going to change that. That's now going to be um, 410 pounds we need. Okay, and the difference, the reduction, the 490 pounds we're going to add to the retained earnings because that will increase our profit for the year, £490. 
Okay, right, one last thing we need to deal with then. It tells us that on the 27th of April 2018, the directors completed an issue of 100,000 ordinary shares of 50p each. Okay, the shares were at a premium of 75p per share. So we had 100,000 shares and we sold them for, well, 50p is the, the ordinary amount. So we've got 50,000 pounds going to ordinary share capital, plus we had £100,000 times the 75p premium. So our share premium is going to go up by £75,000. So the total amount we've received is £125,000. So when we come to do the statement of financial position, we're going to add, um, 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 that's going to go up by, so 250,000, we're going to add to that 100,000 shares at 50p each. So that's going up by 50,000 pounds. So we're now going to have 300,000 pounds in ordinary share capital. And then the share premium, we didn't have a share premium before looking at this list. So we've got a share premium, which if you remember was 100,000 shares times the 75p premium. So the total amount these shares have been sold for is £1.25 times £100,000. Okay, ordinarily that will be paid into the bank, but we're told here that that money has been used to reduce the bank loan. So we can take that £125,000 off the bank loan. So we've got to put £75,000 into the share premium, and then we're going to reduce the bank loan by £125,000. Okay, so you've got everything you need there to get going with that. I've uploaded onto Google Classroom a pro forma of the statement of financial position that you can use. Perhaps just fill in the blanks, but have a go yourself at working through step by step and see if you can come up with a statement of financial position that adds up. If all else fails, I've got a um, an Excel file which shows you with workings what the final, final statement of financial position should look like. Enjoy.